All right, everyone, welcome back to Retaking the Nation. We're doing a 2024 Senate prediction, April 2024. It's been a while since I've done these. Not like a ton of news since my last prediction, but we're going to take a crack at it here. But make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We're going to be having daily news regarding election stuff, politics, and all of that. So you're not going to miss out on that. I think I've been vindicated once again on the guaranteed three. Many people will debate this, but it looks like it's going to turn out. Many people were seething when I was talking about the guaranteed three even two years ago, um, but it's still going to happen, and uh, you can take my word for it on that. Now, let's fill in the safe states, though, for this Senate election. We'll, we'll start with the Democrats. We'll be charitable, very, very charitable. So Washington, California, uh, unfortunately, there's no way that um, the Republican candidate is going to pull that one out there. Steve Garvey, yeah, he's a strong candidate, but it's still California. And it may even trend to the right, but we uh, as Republicans don't have a shot at pulling that one out. So we got Washington, California, Hawaii is another obvious one. And then we've got Delaware. New Jersey is kind of an interesting situation, but right now I'm going to say it's safe. I'm going to be charitable there as well. Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. And Vermont, uh, Maine, most likely safe. I think I'm going to stick with that for now. New York will also be a safe state. Minnesota could be under 10, but with Amy Klobuchar, she's a very, very strong candidate. I don't see uh, that one really being close. Um, so we're looking at about 40 safe uh, seats for the Democrats. Notice Maryland is not considered safe at the moment, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that one. Um, but for Republicans, we've got a number of safe states to talk about here. Uh, Mississippi, Tennessee, Missouri, Josh Hawley is not losing. Indiana, both Nebraska seats. I know there's rumors about the independent candidate. It's still going to be a safe state. Democrats are not going to win that. That's a pipe dream. Uh, we've got Utah as well um, coming in here. So that's basically all. And then, yes, we're going to have West Virginia. So West Virginia is definitely on the table as a safe state. Part of the guaranteed three, I mean, if you look at any of the polling, Jim Justice, he's beloved in the state. Um, even the prediction sources, so stop seething because it all says solid R, flip. So, yeah, no, there's no shot a Democrat is going to win there. It's come, coming down to the primary, and Justice is leading big time there. So that is a guaranteed flip for Republicans. So they're already at 48 Senate seats, just from a, a safe perspective. And now maybe we can talk about the likely Democrat states, um, I'm going to add Maryland to that list, although Larry Hogan is polling well, there's still a lot of time, and there's not a lot of name recognition for some of these Democrats in the race so far. So it could be like a nine-point victory for the Democrat. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, but I, I don't see Hogan pulling it out. There's just so much time. There's a president at the top of the ticket. Um, it would be really sort of um, out of the ordinary for him to pull that race out. Stranger things have happened, but I don't see it happening. Virginia is another likely state. Even if Hong Kao runs, um, it's still going to be like a seven-point victory for Democrats. He, he may outrun Trump by a couple points, but Virginia is still not a state that Republicans really have a shot at winning. New Mexico would be another one that I think would be in that likely column. You know, a seven, eight-point victory there. That's likely what Biden's margin is going to be. So that's kind of what I'm seeing in terms of the likely states for the Democrats. I think Pennsylvania might even be in that category as well. Somewhere between lean and likely. McCormick is not that strong of a candidate. Um, so, and, you know, we're going to have Trump at the top of the ticket, but that's going to be a very, very close state. And Trump would have to win the state, I think, by at least five to get McCormick over the finish line. So that's what I'm going with for now. I think it's just being very generous, actually, to the Democrat side. If we look at the likely Republican states, we've got Florida in there. I don't think it's going to be a 10-point victory, but Rick Scott will win by quite a bit there. Democrats seem to think that they have a shot at it. They don't. I mean, if you look at the fundraising, voter registration, the ratings, polling, everything shows that, yeah, the only poll is a Dem internal, which shows Powell up one. Yeah, so it's not going to happen. Same thing with Texas. Ted Cruz is polling better. He's more well-liked as a Republican. It's not 2018. Texas is moving back towards the right. Trump looks like he's on pace to win the state by nine. No shot there for Democrats. So Republicans already have 50 states um, in their column. And we really even hadn't gotten to the competitive states yet. If we want to talk about lean states, maybe we can get into lean states here. Uh, I think a state like Michigan will probably be, end up being lean Democrat at the end of the day. We're just going to have to see. But I think we might get a three, four point victory there. That one could be closer. 
Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're quite a ways out. So it's tough to tell uh, with some of these for sure. But that's actually all the lean states I see for Democrats. A lean state that Sherrod Brown is not winning people. The guaranteed three will remain. I mean, Bernie Moreno's already starting to pull well at a statewide level. And we're a, quite a ways out. I mean, this is just the J.D. Vance thing all over again, where people are like, oh, he can't win. He can't win. It's like, are you kidding me? Um, you know, everyone was super stressed out. He's only up one in the polls. He ended up winning very, very easily. And you're going to have Trump at the top of the ticket. And he's up like 10 in the polls there. So not a chance. Sherrod Brown outruns Biden by 11. Same thing with Montana. Uh, John Tester's not not outrunning Biden by 16 points. That's just insane. We're not in that kind of league anymore. So Republicans already have 52 seats. So then, and this is a pretty much a guaranteed situation here. So the Senate's basically lost for Democrats at this point. If we want to get into more uh, tilt states, I think that Wisconsin is going to be a tilt Democrat at the Senate race. It's going to be very close to the presidential race. Uh, Hove Day has been an amazing candidate so far in the state, and we've got a ways to go. So I think it's going to be much closer than people think. You know, Many were concerned about the, the candidate selection, but Republicans definitely picked a good one uh, in Wisconsin. I also think Nevada is going to be much closer than people think. I don't like the Republican candidate there, but Trump is polling very, very well in Nevada, and that makes a big difference. Think about 2016 with Ron Johnson in Wisconsin and uh, you know, in Pennsylvania with Pat Toomey. It makes a big difference. The last seat that we're kind of contesting is I'm a little disappointed, but there's a lot of chaos going on with the GOP in Arizona. I have it going blue at the presidential level. I don't think at the moment Kerry Lake is going to pull out the state. That could definitely change. And Trump is pulling well in Arizona as well. So that's kind of the, we're seeing a bit of a disconnect between some of the presidential polling and some of the Senate polling right now. And with no Christian cinema in there, I think that does hurt Kerry Lake a bit. But I think over time, people will eventually see uh, what kind of candidate the Democrat candidate is there and maybe go to, towards Carrie Lake. I mean, she barely lost in 2022. I don't think she's as disliked as people say. Definitely with the abortion stuff going down in Arizona, that definitely throws a wrench in the GOP's plans. I would definitely be more in favor of diverting resources to somewhere like Wisconsin um, and making sure we shore up Ohio and Montana, although I don't think we could spend much money there and still win those states anyways. But I think we should be striving for as Republicans to win uh, the important swing states. Don't try and get this ridiculous majority. Get the 52, right? Get 52. I think that's easily achievable. But if you look at my map here, there's three states that if Trump has a good night on election night, uh, they can end up flipping Republican. But there isn't really a reverse scenario where if Democrats have an amazing night, I still don't see Ohio, Montana flipping in any situation, certainly not Texas. Um, they would just win the Rust Belt Senate states by an even greater margin. So this is my final map, 52-48, fairly conservative once again uh, from, from my vantage point. Like, I don't think I'm giving the Republicans any gifts here. Um, this might even be a little more favorable to Democrats. So we're going to have to see as polling goes on, as primaries go on, uh, how this stuff develops. You know, Hogan could end up being a dark horse candidate who continues to poll well. We're just going to have to find out. Um, you know, Tammy Baldwin can end up pulling ahead by a bit. So we just don't know at this point. Like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know which of these picks do you think or which uh, which state is going to be an upset? Which which state do you think is going to surprise people on election night? Is it going to be Wisconsin, Arizona? Do you think somehow Sherrod Brown will pull it out in Ohio? I'd like to hear your thoughts in a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.